Each one of us is uniquely who we are because of the places we have lived, the people we have known, and the experiences that have involved us. What were the major life events that helped to form Tolkien? What were the joys and tragedies that shaped his soul and the world he created? Join us as we begin our exploration of the life of J.R.R. Tolkien. The Tolkien Road, Episode 219, The Life of J.R.R. Tolkien, Part 1. Hello everyone, welcome to The Tolkien Road, Episode 219, The Life of J.R.R. Tolkien, Part 1. Greta, what's hey. up? I'm, um, oh, I thought ha- you were going to ask Friday me. Happy Friday after Thanksgiving. Yes, they, you know, it's so funny. I feel like that needs to be a hashtag. Hashtag day after Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's like, I just feel like so many things that happen on the day after Thanksgiving just don't happen other times of the year. Mm. Case in point, our youngest son just asked for some macaroni and cheese, to which his older sister replied, well, what did you have for lunch today? And he thought a minute and said, stuffing. Yeah. I mean, when else do you have stuffing for lunch? Yeah. Right? Not Except the day after Thanksgiving. Not many other days, yeah. No. Yeah. Like Although, just... with as tasty as stuffing is, you'd think that you'd have it I more know. often. I wonder, maybe maybe people do have it more often. Maybe we're just weird. Yeah. But I don't think I had it a whole lot growing up either, except on the holidays. But there is something to the idea that, you know, when you... Like, I learned a long time ago that when you really like something... You need to be careful. Like you don't overdo it all at once because right. you'll get bored. You'll get bored of it. You'll <laughs> it get it'll tired lose. Of it. But if you if you just like let it be the Thanksgiving thing, mm-hmm. you know, then it's mm-hmm. like oh boy, you know, you look forward to it and it's really tasty, right? Yeah. So exactly, exactly. So yeah, happy uh, day after Thanksgiving to you as well. Yeah, this will this one will this episode will spin off into our new episode, John's observations on human nature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sounds good. What it means. I'd listen. What it means to be human. What it means to be human. Yes. Yes. By, by John Carswell, episode one. <laughs> Friday after Thanksgiving. I was going to say, the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I wonder how many people are actually like doing Black Friday shopping today. I don't know. I don't know. But you know, we have a lot of people who listen to us from overseas and, uh, you know, for them it's not Thanksgiving. Oh, you're right. So, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Now, I think wow. other countries have their own Thanksgivings on different days. I'm That's pretty sure, true. I know pretty Canada, sure Canada does. Has, yeah. has its own Thanksgiving. They do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, to, you know, yesterday was American Thanksgiving, a.k.a. real Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, go, don't go get in there. We'll just call what, it Turkey Day. Why did half of our Patreon subscribers suddenly just it's, cancel well, their subscriptions? I don't know and, why. I feel like you're, like, doing this self-sabotage thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just I kidding. know. It is a very unique holiday, though. It's the only holiday that is just purely focused on food. Yeah. So it's really kind of unique in that way. Well, you don't give, we, you don't give oh, Thanksgiving I, presents? No. I mean... I do give thanks yeah. for my food, but I do that every day. <laughs> you don't just give walk up to somebody on the street and give them a... Give me some stuffing. <laughs> Here you go. No, but I, I'm going stuffing to Stuffing high five. I'm going to do that next year. Up high. Stuffing balls coming yeah. at you. All right. All right. Well, That's enough turkey boy. day, post turkey day talk. Well, if my comment about the real Thanksgiving didn't get half of our, didn't lose half of our subscribers, then uh, yeah. surely our banter right there will. Um, I hope not. Well, we're glad you all are listening. Yeah, um, we're glad that you, you bared with us through yes. the- Bore with us. Bore with us. Bore with us mm-hmm. through our random banter about Turkey. On this episode, we will discuss the life and times of J.R.R. Tolkien. Our latest episode, actually, we're going to begin the discussion. I actually planned for this to just be one episode on this topic, but then I started doing it and I was like, no, nah, this is going to be like at least two or three, maybe more. But um, even so, it's supposed to be like high level overview of Tolkien's life. Okay. So, I'm excited. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah, me too. You know, I mean, here we are. It's like 219 episodes into a podcast about Tolkien called The Tolkien Road, and we haven't really dealt with his life story. 
much other than just like in passing you know right we did do a review of the the, of the biography movie. movie of the yep. movie yeah mm-hmm. um but it, yes and actually this episode will probably feel if you've seen the movie will probably feel a little bit like you know the script of that movie because it does deal with basically his this one's going to deal with basically his early life which is what the movie tolkien dealt mm-hmm. with um but you know you got to start there right gotta start somewhere uh so our last episode of course wrestled with the role of tolkien's own religion and understanding the works of middle earth and that got me thinking why haven't we spent any meaningful amount of time looking at tolkien's life in the first place there's no good reason that's right that's why we're doing it now no good reason mm-hmm. i have failed tolkien for 218 episodes but so. you know what better better late than never that's right we're riding the ship so like our episode on religion i'm hoping this one is a jumping off point for future deep dive episodes into specific topics under the under the umbrella of tolkien's life hmm. right because okay. he lived a very interesting life yeah in a lot of different yeah. ways mm-hmm. so and i do think that like was with you know with our kind of the point of our the thesis of our episode last week being that the the religious beliefs of a writer actually play an important part in more deeply appreciating their works absolutely um all different, you know, so many different aspects of their biography mm-hmm. do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's maybe not the most important thing, but it, it might be more important than you realize, it right? Might. I mean, it's a huge source of inspiration, and, regardless. And it, even as I was just going through, like, doing the notes for this episode, I was like, huh, I didn't know that. And that sounds like it probably, you know, influenced this aspect of his stories, right? You know, mm-hmm. so I just saw these little things that I was like, I could see that, in, you know, mm-hmm. being an influence on... On his stories. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Case in point, and we'll get to this. Did you know that when at King George V's coronation in 1910, Tolkien, uh, at 18 years old, was like one of the, like he participated as like a, like kind of a soldier boy in the parade. And he was like literally posted like right outside of Buckingham Palace. Whoa. So that got me to thinking like, well, I wonder how much influence that had on like the coronation, coronation scene of, for, right, of for Argorn. Argorn, right? Yeah, yeah, for real. So very cool. Well, this is gonna be fun. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, before we get started, we'd like to give a shout out to our patrons. Special thanks to this episode's executive producer, Caitlin of Tea with Tolkien. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Yes, thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our newest patron, Eric S. Eric, thank Eric, you. Thank, thank you, you for becoming a patron. Yes. And uh, if you are not already a patron. Those of you who are listening, if you are not already a patron, please head on over to patreon.com slash Tolkien Road. If you are 219 episodes in, we would really appreciate your support, right? You know, for, um, you know, for our podcast. And, mm-hmm. uh, you yeah, know, it means a ton when we see that uh, every new, every new patron come through, right? Uh, you're going to get a thank you video from us, right? A personalized thank you video from us and, uh, and, you know, many more things to come. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. A good deal. It's a win-win. So head on over to patreon.com slash Tolkien Road to find out all the deets. All right. So yeah, and and if you're unable to support us via Patreon, you can also support us in the following ways. Tip jar, go to that episode and go to on the website and click the blue leave a tip button. And then subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes and other podcasting platforms. That five star review and that or five stars and then leaving that written review telling the world how much you love our show and why that all makes a huge difference for us. So mm-hmm. thank it you. really does. Yeah. Thanks yeah. ahead of time. Yes. For all of those things. Thank you ahead yes. of time. Yes. All right. Uh, not a lot of uh, Tolkien news. And actually, there were some things I maybe wanted to talk about. Not like any blockbuster news or anything like that this week there were some things i maybe wanted to mention but i'm going to save those for a later episode because this is going to be a little bit of a a shorter episode no court no correspondence this week and mostly it's just because we've had a shorter week and so there's you know just because of thanksgiving and you mm-hmm. know and some yeah. and some travel and those kinds of things it's we just we need to be kind of keep this one a little short this week okay so okay yeah but we'll we'll maybe do extra correspondence on next episode Ooh, yeah to make up for it so fun. we've had a lot of good correspondence coming in from the last episode so awesome yeah okay. and uh, and also some review some responses to my latest video tolkien versus the nazis over on youtube uh had some interesting uh responses to that over there so head on over to that channel and check them out i may end up bringing those up on next week's episode for correspondence or i may just respond to them directly over on the channel so okay we will see all right yeah and if you got news send us tips please all right yes Greta, you ready to talk about the you life know, of I've, Tolkien? I'm totally ready. You're ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's talk about Tolkien. All right. So, Tolkien. 
Tolkien was born on January 3rd, 1892, in what is now known as South Africa. Hmm. His parents were Arthur Tolkien and Mabel Suffield Tolkien. Arthur Tolkien was an English banker, and his job was their reason for being in South Africa. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize he was born in South Africa. Yes, he was. Yeah. How interesting. And we share a birth month. You do share a birth How month. How nice. Yeah. I was thinking it's it's incredible that our family hasn't made January 3rd like a feast day in our home, you know? It, I think we need to start yeah. this year. It needs to be our inaugural Absolutely. Tolkien feast day. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and I, I need to do this now so that our kids, this becomes a habit for our kids and, you know, they can carry this forward into their own families mm-hmm. before, uh, before it's too late and, you know, just doing anything I can to get them on the Tolkien, on the Tolkien train. Right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, born in South Africa to English parents, right. You know, uh, you know, British citizens. Um, and yeah, you know, those first couple of years, not a whole lot more to say about it. Um, you know, there may be some interesting tidbits here and there. Uh, he had one brother, Hillary Arthur Rule Tolkien, born in 1894, so just two years after him. Uh, and Hillary died in 1976. So, hmm. um, so just three years after his older brother, right? So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Now, we won't, we won't really talk much about Hillary, but I wanted to say a few interesting things about him. Hillary eventually became a farmer in in Evesham, England, I believe that's correct. We might uh, we might need a, a little help from David Bates on the pronunciation of some of these mm. English <laughs> yes. English place names. Yes, I'm sure we'll butcher many of them. So uh, you've been warned, David Bates and our our other uh, UK uh, originating listeners. Help us out if we're messing stuff up. Feel free to correct us. Um, so yeah, Hillary eventually became a farmer in Evesham, England. Was married and had three children. And then I found this funny. They apparently also he apparently also had a dog. His family had a dog whom they named Bilbo when obedient and Baggins when not. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, so Hillary's family had this dog. Yeah, Hillary's family okay. had this dog. That's funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, just cute, cute little note. You know, um, I I need to go back and read the 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 Humphrey Car- Carpenter biography, and uh, you know, it'd be it'd be interesting to learn more about. Tolkien's relationship with his brother over the course of their life, since they pretty much, I mean, they lived, you know, Hillary was, was, you know, was alive for all of Tolkien's conscious life. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so, mm-hmm. um, but you don't really ever hear much about her. About, you know, about and Hillary, that's interesting right? because I mean, they would have only had each other exactly after both of their parents passed. So you'd think, I mean, that must've been a very important relationship. It, it may have just been like a very like good relationship and there was just no drama in it yeah and yeah. you know there was just so there's no reason no. to like really bring it up they were just they were just brothers, brothers you yeah. know yeah. and um and you know or maybe whatever issues they had between the two of them if they had any because you know i mean family members often have little things that, between them you know they may have just decided to keep them quiet you know to keep things mm-hmm. quiet keep things between the two of them so yeah gotta but, respect that yeah so hillary is kind of an interesting figure because he is a Kind of mysterious. Yeah, so, not a whole lot known yeah. about him. But he does have he did have three children of his own. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know much about their their life stories or if they're still alive or what or how many descendants they had. Um, but you know, it'd be interesting one day to just uh, you know at least see if there's enough interesting information there, public information available to you know uh, to learn more about Tolkien's only sibling. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. All right. So. Um, and by the way, uh, hat tip to the Lord of the Rings wiki for that, uh, for that little tidbit on, oh, the, the, on dog. the dog, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea of giving your pet one name when they're good and another when they're bad. I yeah. think that's kind of clever. Yeah. And, and, you know, Baggins is a pretty good, like, <laughs> Baggins is a pretty good name to give, you know, to give to a pet when it's being bad, I think. Yeah. Stop being such a Baggins. Stop being such a Baggins. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Baggins, we hate it forever. Right. Probably shouldn't say that to your pet. No. All right. So, um, tragedy struck pretty early for Tolkien. So, in 1896, early 1896, when um, Mabel, um, Tolkien, and Hillary were home uh, in England on a long vacation visiting family, um, Arthur passed away, passed away from rheumatic fever. Was he back in South Africa? He was still in South Africa. Apparently oh. he was planning on coming and joining them, right? 
back in England. Um, but yeah, he passed away of rheumatic fever. Wow. So, oh man. Do you know what the modern ver- like modern translation of rheumatic fever is, or it's, is it a thing just, that it's rheumatic fever? It's just okay. not very common anymore. Like, what does that mean? What does what mean? Rheumatic fever. It, it has a. Is it like with rheumatoid ar- arthritis? It's it. You know, any anything with that is going to imply some kind of autoimmune issue, but. Um, so it's an autoimmune disease. I think it is. Uh oh, I'm putting um, the nurse on the you spot. You are. You're putting the nurse on the spot <laughs> after a night shift too. How dare you? Wikipedia. Rheumatic fever is an inflammatory disease that can involve the heart, joints, skin, and brain. The disease typically develops two to four weeks after a streptococcal after you throat get strep infection. Throat. Yep. Hmm. So it's basically wow. your body doesn't know how to deal with the strep bacteria, and it's kind of left to fester and kind of wreak havoc on the heart it looks the body. like body yeah yeah uh it says the heart is involved in about half of the cases interesting so yeah so arthur died in 1896 uh and this left mabel and her two boys without any financial support so yeah man, yeah rough that's rough yeah so now was she catholic at this point no we'll get to that okay. we'll get to that good question though. so she was still like she had extended family Yes. That was willing to support her at this point? Right. Okay. So this is 1896. And so, of course, they don't go back to South Africa at this point. Uh, They settled near Birmingham. Birmingham. Say that. We see we have a... We have a Birmingham here in the States that's a big city that's very that's pretty close to us, about three hours away, and we say Birmingham, mm-hmm. Birmingham, Alabama, and then there's Birmingham. Birmingham. Birmingham in England, I Birmingham, think. Birmingham, England. <laughs> I think I'm saying that right. Uh, but Bir- Birmingham, England is basically, oh, how far is that? It looks like it's maybe 60, 80 miles northwest of London, so um, maybe not too far from the border with Wales. The English Wales, uh, England and Wales border, over there, but a pretty pretty large city there in England, and you know that's basically the area where Tolkien grew up. He grew up on kind of the outskirts, um, you know, of uh, of Birmingham there, and then uh, you know went to school in Birmingham as a young man. So that is that is his his home place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also one of the stops on. Simon's tour was that it we talked about I thought it was I don't I couldn't recall if it not? was or not it may be I couldn't recall though oh, well maybe you'll, I'm wrong. you'll just have to go to historybites.com slash tour and find out for yourself do yourself yeah. a flavor and do that well even if it's not exactly there or it'll be near there yeah right I there, mean, well, yeah, relatively speaking, like everything in right, England. Right, I was, was going to say, <laughs> it feels like, closer it, it's than... an island, a not very big island. So, yeah. you know, we yeah, won't be far. Clo- clo- you know, we're in, we're just outside of Nashville, actually on the south side of Nashville. Uh, and we're talking about Birmingham. And Birmingham's like three and a half hours away from us. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, so that's like, that's like 200 miles. Yeah. Right. Whereas yeah. you know, the, London to Birmingham is uh, like, you know, eighty miles or something right. like that. Looks no, like just so and funny. I'm just doing the map. It may be closer to a hundred, but I'm just doing the eyeball on uh, Google Maps there. Uh, everything in the states feels spread further apart. It really does. All right. So, um, as a young boy, Tolkien apparently loved to explore the countryside, and many of the locations he explored inspired his later works. So, you know, mm. I, I kind of imagine this as being, you know, the countryside around Birmingham being very idyllic, you know, mm-hmm. just, you know, yeah. pastoral and, you know, lots of farms and agrarian and that kind of thing. Yes. Um, yes. So, you know, maybe, maybe it was an inspiration for, you know, the Shire, right? But absolutely. So, yeah, and I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the first few years of his life, he was homeschooled. Um, he was also apparently a very bright student, learning to read at four years old, and uh, and Mabel taught both boys herself. And then in 1900, uh, Mabel became Roman Catholic, much to the chagrin of her Baptist family, and that effectively severed her and the boys from any financial assistance. So Tolkien himself would have been eight years old that year when, when she became Catholic. And um, and yeah, that... Uh, that was obviously a very big turning point in his life. Yeah. You know, it would be really, um, and I don't know if there's much written about this, but I would be very interested to know about Mabel's conversion story. 
Yeah, wouldn't that be interesting to know it more about? It would be really interesting. Yeah. I mean, especially... Because we're both, com- we're both converts. We're both so converts. Attention um, to us. But I feel like this would be especially interesting because, I mean, she had absolutely nothing to gain and everything to lose by by becoming Catholic. Yeah. So it must have been something that she clearly felt very strongly about and was willing to make tremendous sacrifices for. So it'd be interesting to maybe look into that a little bit, see if Tolkien maybe wrote anything or somebody else wrote much about it. Well, um, I can tell you one thing Tolkien wrote because in 1904, Mabel died of acute diabetes at Mm. only 34 years old. And apparently, which at that point, it was before insulin had been invented or um, was you know, developed into a treatment for diabetes. Mm. Um, and so that was like, she was pushing the limit of how long somebody with acute diabetes could, could live at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. When you don't have all the treatments that we have today, but, yeah. but Tolkien wrote much later to, to your, the point of the quote and the things that she lost, right. The, the what it cost her to convert right mm. to Roman Catholicism. Um, Tolkien wrote of his mother, much later in life, he said, My own dear mother was a martyr indeed, and it is not to everybody that God grants so easy a way to his great gifts as he did to Hillary and myself, giving us a mother who killed herself with labor and trouble to ensure us keeping the faith. Wow. So it was obviously a very, very important thing to Tolkien himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It was something, you know, it was something that he's, he, his mother's life bore witness to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And something that she bore witness to so well that it left a very strong impression on him. And yeah. and one might suppose Hillary as well, though I don't know Hillary's life story. I don't know if you know how he felt about anything. Obviously, right. yeah. So, and Tolkien was only twelve. Tolkien was only when twelve. She died. Yeah, wow. yeah. And and you know, it may have been one thing to just be like a twelve-year-old boy orphaned, right? Uh, but it's another thing when you're maybe the older brother, right? And mm-hmm. you maybe feel a responsibility to you know to kind of care for your younger brother, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, along with that. But but fortunately, that's where Father Francis enters the picture. So Mabel had assigned guardianship of the boys to Father Francis Xavier Morgan of the Birmingham Oratory, which is a Catholic religious community founded in 1849 by John Henry Newman, uh, a famous Anglican clergyman who had converted to Catholicism mm-hmm. in, uh, in the mid-19th century. So, um, and if I ever get a chance to go to Birmingham, I definitely would like to visit the Birmingham Oratory. Absolutely, that like a very, yeah. Very cool place. Very uh, looks to be a, a pretty beautiful church there. So, yeah. little looking at the looking Ooh. at the pictures over here. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. Very beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, of Father Francis, Tolkien later said he was an upper class Welsh Spaniard Tory, and seemed to some just a pottering old gossip. He was, and he was not. I first learned charity and forgiveness from him. Hmm. So, um, so Tolkien, obviously, you know, this, this man, Father Francis was effectively his father, right? Yeah. His only parent from yeah. the age of 12 until early adulthood. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, he apparently, again, probably like, you know, like all kids, how, in the way that all kids view their parents once, once they're grown, right. They know the good and the bad and they can see, you know, that yes, you know, he may have, you know, to some, he may have just been a pottering old gossip, but I saw true Christian charity and forgiveness in him. Right. Mm -hmm. And I knew the man, you know, I knew the man well, and I knew the, I knew the things that, um, that were virtuous in him. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so with Mabel out of the picture and no longer able to school her sons, uh, Tolkien began attending King Edward School in Birmingham, um, and actually, this would have started in 1900, which was before um, before she had passed away. And you know, one would assume that at, at that time, you know, it was like, well, you need to get into a school, right? If you're going to have any any a good life in England, you need to get into a, a decent school from a young age, right? Um, and so he attended King Edward School in Birmingham from 1900 to 1911. Uh, interrupted briefly in 1903. I'm not re- exactly sure why that was, uh, but he went. He he started attending St. Philip's School in 1903, and then it says, and then it said he had a uh, uh, he received a scholarship after okay. uh, in 1903 after he'd been attending St. Philip's School for a little while that allowed him to go back to King Edward School. Gotcha. Um, so I'm not sure of the whole financial situation that played out there, but it must have been he left because they couldn't afford it, and then he got the scholarship, and mm-hmm. so he could go back. Mm-hmm. Um, 
King Edward School is still a school that's around in Birmingham. Uh, it seems to be a pretty prestigious school as well. It was founded by King Edward the I believe the sixth in the 16th century. The, so the the son of Henry the Eighth, right? Wow. Uh, so it's a school that had been around even then. Had been around for a really long time. Yeah, yeah. And then during his adolescent school years, he began to develop a fascination with languages and began constructing his own. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. didn't realize that he had started at such a young age. Yeah. Well, apparently um, he had some cousins who had had uh, had like kind of made their, made up their own languages. It was like a pretty, you know, pretty playful, like little low key thing. But that may be that may be the thing that sparked his, you know, his imagination. Right. That was just kind right? of the beginning of all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then he also apparently did well enough in school to earn a spot at Exeter College in Oxford. Wow. Yeah. So, which which is a part of the Oxford University system. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, um, of course, if you've seen the movie and if you know anything about Tolkien's biography, you know that there was this thing called the TCBS, mm. uh, the Tea Club and Barovian Society. It was started in 1911 while he was still at St. Edward's, uh, at King Edward School. Uh, and it was started by with by Tolkien with three friends, Rob Gilson, Jeffrey Smith, and Christopher Wiseman. And of course, those are the three friends that play such an important part in the Tolkien film. Um, after graduation, the members stayed in touch. Um, to me, this, you know, and, and again, this is one we could probably do a, a couple of episodes on this, the whole question of like what the TCBS was and why it was important in Tolkien's life. Uh, but you know, just what jumps out at a very cursory overview is it, it's that sign of his fondness for fellowship, right? Mm-hmm. So you think of four, right? You think of four young men, uh, together, like having this little society and you think of the fellowship, you think of the four hobbits, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, you just think of like these like little, you know, little English gentlemen, right. You know, <laughs> drinking tea. Right. Um, yeah. and it, and it and makes beer. you think of, and po- probably beer too, mm-hmm. but it makes you think of, um, it, it makes you think of Frodo, uh, Frodo, Sam, Mary, and Pippin. So yeah, so maybe these uh, these young men were inspirations for those those characters in a way. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Cool. Um, in 1908, he met Edith Bratt at the age of 16 when he moved into the boarding house where she also lived. Uh, of course, she was three years his senior. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and but being orphans, they quickly bonded and it wasn't long until things became romantic. Of course, Father Francis did not approve of the relationship, probably primarily because Edith was not Catholic. So oh. that was a big sticking point. And as his guardian and as a Catholic priest, Father Francis is probably saying to himself, Oh no, I will not I made <laughs> I made a promise to your mother, right? And and that that I would raise you in the faith, right? Um and you know, there's there was some controversy over the portrayal of Father Francis in the Tolkien film, and you know the, the modern I think the modern mindset has a hard time coming to gra- gra- grips with uh, uh, the kind of paternalistic you know perspective portrayed by Father Francis, right? Mm-hmm. Where he's like, you know, I don't care if you're 16 years old and she's 19, this is not good for you, and I forbid it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of mindset. It's hard. It's harder for us in the modern day to, you know, wrap our minds around. It is, but yeah. but on a very personal level, I think anyone could sympathize with the idea that Father Francis probably felt like he had a grave responsibility towards Mabel, right? Mm-hmm. Who had who had died and left these two boys in his charge, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it's, that's yeah. that's not just a like, you know. I'm trying to shove my religion down your throat kind of thing. It's a, like, I, I promised your mother, <laughs> I made a vow to your mother that I would, mm-hmm. I would raise you in the faith. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I'm, I'm sure he knew he couldn't forbid him forever. Right. Right. For um, sure. Yeah. But I wonder, I think a lot of it maybe, I'm, I'm probably basing this on the film as well, but, um, but he probably saw a lot of potential and promise in, in Tolkien as far as his education went Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, could very well have seen Edith as a sort of distraction yeah, and, you know, that, um, could interfere with his success at, with his studies. Yeah. So, yeah, you gotta, you gotta relate. I I can kind of relate. Um, well, and apparently, apparently there was, there were some issues with, um, 
uh, there were some issues with his studies. Apparently, his studies did suffer. You know, and this, and again, you know, he 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 finished. I guess what I think of him in my mind is is high school, right? Mm-hmm. He was he was coming towards the end of his high school career in around 1911, and uh, and and apparently his grades start did start suffering a little bit after he met Edith and spending a lot of time with her, mm. uh, and and was spending a lot of time with her. So, yep. so of course. Um, they're, you know, it's kind of a rocky time, you know, they, they are very, Edith and, and Tolkien are very much in love and, and fall in love very, you know, pretty quickly in the grand scheme of things. Um, and so, uh, and things get pretty rocky, uh, though they had previously broken up, uh, Tolkien wrote to Edith in 1913 and proposed, um, he found out that Edith was at that time engaged to be married to George Field. However, when Tolkien's proposal came, she broke off her engagement with Field and accepted Tolkien's proposal. So mm. apparently it was kind of a no brainer for Edith, right? She had been, you know, and Tolkien maybe <laughs> Tolkien maybe acted it just in just in the nick of time, right? Um Yes. You know, and 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 I will say, like, you know, today it's again, today it's certainly no 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 small thing for someone to break off their engagement with somebody else, but it's more of like an emotional level thing. Mm-hmm. I think at mm-hmm. that time it was like a there was tremendous mm-hmm. social pressure. Mm-hmm. On somebody like Edith, not to do, n- not to break off a, you know, what yeah. looked like a promising arrangement, right? Right, right. marital it was arrangement, borderline scandalous, probably. It, borderline scandalous, but also just probably foolish in the eyes of whatever like extended family she had, and you know, it probably, it probably, you know, it, it it probably threatened her own social standing, right? Was this George Field guy? Was he pretty like? established in the well so here's what's interesting um i didn't do a lot of in- research into him mm-hmm. um but she was living at the time with somebody na- named ch jessup who was a family friend mm-hmm. and this i don't even know if this is a man or a woman but ch jessup wrote of the situation i have nothing to say against tolkien he is a cultured gentleman but his prospects are poor in the extreme and when he will be in a position to marry i cannot imagine had he adopted a profession it would have been different mm. so you know, this is really like, I mean, this, this really says something about like how, how, how in love, like that, that they really, if, if there is such a thing as a soulmate, mm-hmm. they were probably soulmates. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like just this idea of that she was willing to break off what may have been a more advantageous and promising future and kind of a, you know, well-to-do society sort of sense. Right. For the sake of the love who she I guess she viewed as the love of her life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, she was willing to make that sacrifice. Yeah. You know, she followed her heart. Absolutely. And I think that's beautiful. It will. It, it is very beautiful. And it's uh, and it's certainly the kind of, you know, the, the kind of story that, um, you know, delights you. And um, it is, you know, especially thinking about this time. I mean, this is the early 1900s. I mean, women were. You mean to a large extent they were dependent on the man that they married oh, yeah. for their support. Well, you saw what happened to Mabel, right? You know, and right. and and she yeah. she married an English banker, but right. you know it was kind yeah. of like you're tottering, you know. The, but even she, when he died, right? I mean, she's basically in the poorhouse with two boys, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it, you were much much less likely as a woman back then to have to be able to make it on your own, right? Especially when you have kids in tow, kids. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I think Jessup's comment about Tolkien really reflects what a risk Edith Edith took here, right? And and take and dumping Field and taking Tolkien back. Right? I think it's interesting the comment he made. Had he adopted a profession, it would have been different. Yeah. So it's like he's basically. I mean, I don't. I don't quite know what he's trying to say there. I wonder if he's just alluding to the fact that Tolkien is just going to be a forever student or is he just viewed him as kind of flighty and well this is around 1913 so he would have just been starting at oxford Mm -hmm. in that year right um so i think he was you know i think he was planning on he you know maybe he wanted to maybe his plan was to be a professor eventually Mm -hmm. but right Mm -hmm. now he's just a he's barely into college right right? yeah i mean he was 21 years old but he was barely into barely into college. So he had no point. way of supporting himself. No, let alone a wife. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I do, th- I do relish a little bit of like the, um, just the, what turned out to be the, the, I, I relish the thought in all of this that Edith could look back later in life 
and be like, well, I guess I did. I, I guess I did bet on the right horse. Didn't yeah. I? Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He may, I would say so. he may have been pretty shabby looking at the time, but I went with my heart and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. there you go. Right. Uh, you know, I ended up, I ended up marrying who became one of the most popular authors of the 20th century. Right. Right. In term, you know, the man I love more importantly, but exactly. But, but in terms of prospects, I guess I did pretty well. Did well. You know? It, yes. I it rolled was... the dice. <laughs> rolled the dice for the sake of love, and I did pretty well. Mm-hmm. I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. So, beautiful. Good yeah, stuff. for real. All right. So, like I said, Tolkien began attending Exeter College, Oxford, in 1913, and he studied English literature. Um, and then in 1914, of course, World War One broke out, right? So, for the next four years, Europe was at war. Uh, Tolkien was able to delay enlistment until 1915 because of his academic studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wasn't clear in my research just yet. I'll try to figure this out for next episode, but I wasn't clear in my research whether he finished his degree before he went off to war or not. Um, But so he, he did enlist in 1915. um, And then after marrying uh, and then, but he, he stayed, he stayed, um, home, right? He stayed in England all for the rest of 1915, uh, training and that sort of thing. And then he married Edith in March of 1916 when he was, he would have been 24 and she would have been 27. And then he left for combat duty that June and served in France until that November. Hmm. Um, so, uh, and you know, at some point again, world war one, this is like the TCBS. This is like his relationship with Edith. Um, you know, this is like his childhood in Birmingham. This is like the life story of Mabel uh, or the conversion story of Mabel. These are all things we'd like to do deep dives on. World War One is obviously a huge topic and his experience of it is a huge topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so maybe at some point we'll do a deep dive on that. But it's probably enough right now to say this. First, his war experience affected him deeply mm-hmm. as any war experience would affect oh, anybody yeah. going through that. Yeah. Um, you know, it leaves a deep, a deep mark on you, deep impact. And maybe even more importantly, number two, he survived in one piece. Right. So, yep. uh, you know, and it, it makes you think with Tolkien surviving, it makes you think when, when wars like that happen, like Tolkien survived, but, and, and, and look what he gave us. Right. And you think about all the people who didn't survive Mm -hmm. and what did the world lose out on because those people didn't survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, people throw the word tragedy around a whole lot, you know, kind of maybe when they're not sure what to say, but when you think about it in those terms, the young lives that were snuffed out in so many different countries in World War One, or all the worlds, all the wars throughout human history, it really makes you think like, oh man, the, just the, the human potential that was lost mm-hmm. in all of those things. Yeah. Right? What a it, tragedy. It, it really, really is a tragedy. Yeah, it really is. So... All right. Well, like I said, this is just the first part of our look at the life of J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, on the next episode, we will begin to explore Tolkien's post-war life and career, as well as the origins of Middle Earth. Ooh. Yeah. So. Cool beans. Uh, any questions? No. Floating this in your mind a, right now? No, I don't think I have any questions. Um, I think this was a, you know, this was a great jumping off point. I'm excited to to deep dive on some of this stuff. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Well, he's there's um you know, about 50 something more years of lifetime to cover, yeah. you know, so mm-hmm. uh, just at a high level and then yeah, you know, I'm sure we'll find plenty of things to deep dive oh, into. Oh, for sure. And we're just at the very it. beginning. Yeah. yeah. So All right. Well, like I said, no correspondence this time. A uh, shorter episode this week because of it being Thanksgiving week here for us in the states. Uh, but we, of course, want to finish this episode by giving a shout out to our patrons. Thank you all so much. And especially the following Shannon S. Brian O. Emilio P. Zeke F. James A. James L. Chris L. Chuck F. Ozia V. Ish of the Hammer. Teresa C. David of Pints with Jack. Jonathan D. Eric S. Joey S. Eric B. Caitlin of Tea with Tolkien. Matt L. Johanna T. Ms. Anonymous. And Sam N. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Yes. And we will talk at you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.